And again, you know, we are thinking, first of all, in laws, we said, what is the most powerful trigger that our body has that induce all of this repair mechanism cascade? And the most powerful trigger that our body has to induce regeneration is hypoxia, is lack of oxygen. Because evolution perspective, anytime we don't have oxygen, the body knows that there is a problem because you don't have oxygen. So, so a damage was going somewhere along the way. So he, by triggering the hypoxia, but by sensing the hypoxia, the body triggers all the repairs that we spoke about. Stem cells, proliferate, migrate, new blood vessels to generate, new tissue to be built up and replace the damage, the damaged tissue. So I said, okay, okay, that's, oh, that's clear. So can we take a person, hold his breath, stop his heartbeat, we will have hypoxia, will that induce? The answer is, is yes, but there is only one problem with that. This is, this is not exactly healthy and you will actually need the repair mechanism. And then we were thinking, what the body actually sense? Does the body sense absolute values or does the body sense the delta, the fluctuation? It happens to be that there is no absolute in nothing. Nothing is absolute. Everything is relative. Okay, I, I will feel that I'm tall or short, not based on my actual height. That depends on my location. Okay, if if I'm living in Finland, that will probably be very short. If I'm coming to you and visit you in Hong Kong, I will probably be average plus. Okay, so so everything everything is relative. And, and we said, okay, let's see, let's see if we can take advantage of that. Let's increase the oxygen to very high level and then do a fast decline back to the normal. In a way that this decline from very high back to the normal will be sensed at the cellular level as hypoxia. And, and that took us only six years of research and optimizing the protocol. Now it sounds easy, but, but when you're doing that, you're saying, okay, let's try this, try this. And, and so, so this is what we are doing. We are taking people into a chamber. We call it a suite. You sit inside. We are compressing the air to two atmospheres. And then we give the oxygen by mask. By doing that, we are increasing the blood oxygenation from 100 mercuries to 1600. At this level, the amount of the dissolved oxygen is sufficient for all the energy demand of the body. We don't need red blood cells. So oxygen can be delivered even to the location where, where the blood cells cannot go. Uh, so that's one thing. And then the real trick is that per a protocol that we define, people have been asked to take the mask off while they're in the chamber. And when they're taking the mask off, there is an abrupt decline of the oxygen from very high, from 1600 back to the normal. And then we are going up and down again, and we have also the gap between the session where you are back to normal atmosphere. And that fluctuation in oxygen is being sensed as hypoxia at the cellular level. And then the body activate all the things that usually happen during hypoxia in hyper oxygenized condition. The stem cells proliferate, blood vessels start to generate. This is what we call the hyperoxic hypoxic paradox. Uh, our main focus is, is on the brain because the brain is the most challenging and probably the most important tissue. And it happens to be that even in the brain, we have, we have stem cells. We call them neuronal stem cells. They are located in a place in the brain we call hippocampus in the periventricular area. And by doing this fluctuation, these stem cells start to proliferate and then they are migrating. And then for the first time, we can see angiogenesis and neurogenesis in the brain, which is, of course, exciting. 
it doesn't happen, of course, only in the brain. It happens also in other tissue. For example, three months ago, we just published another article from our aging population on which we did cardiac MRI. And we can see that the same angiogenesis that we have in the brain also happen in the heart. You have more blood flow in the heart as the result of that. And having doing that, then the cardiopulmonary exercise test is improving. The maximal capacity, the aerobic, the anaerobic threshold is improving. And this is, this is quite exciting because we can actually open the bottleneck, induce the repair mechanism, and get results at the tissue and the clinical part that is related to that tissue that is being improving. So if we go... Sorry that I spoke yeah. too much. I've no, no, no. That, lot. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot to unpack in there, yes. So if, yeah. if we go back to the kind of the mechanism, so what is actually sensing this oxygen change and kind of initiating the cascade? At the cellular level, we have a promoter. The name of the promoter is HIF. HIF stands for hypoxic induced factor. There are three Nobel Prize winners from 18 months ago on, on the HIF. So once there is hypoxia, HIF is going up. And once HIF is going up, it's a promoter means that once it's going up, there is a whole casket of genes that will be expressed. VGF, vascular endothelial growth factor, that is inducing the generation of the new blood vessels. The mitochondria start to proliferate. The stem cells are being sensing that and you activate their replication, their ability to proliferate and migrate. 